Este es Aaron Cone de Intercomputers.com. Otro video para ti hoy. It is hot today. Ah, it's hot, whatever. It's 80 degrees, the first 80 degree day of the spring. Oh, I love, I love hot weather. And I'm going to go outside and bake, <laughs> bake for a while. Oh, yeah. At least a half an hour, an hour. Just sit out in the sun and just get baked. Hey, man. Don't attack me because I don't sunburn. Unlike some individuals especially in America you know it's not my fault I was born this way I may as well take advantage of it alright so another problem another rating another compensation and this time I got a bonus the user profile service failed to log in just a catastrophic frightening error even if I were to ponder it myself with one of my computers now you don't have to get emotional you can you can be an emotional bitch American and get all emotional angry and go into a school and shoot somebody because you're frustrated and you you take out your own transgressions on innocent people in January the first two or three weeks in January of this year there were already nine school shootings it's already April there could be 30 or 40 of them but that's what these thugs in America perpetrate I digress back user profile service failed to log in now this could be a false positive it could be really that your user to me it's your user profile is corrupt now whether or not it's corruption with your hard disk it could be that your hard drive is starting to fail or that there are bad sectors on the hard drive where your user profile data is located or it could be that Windows has become corrupted but when you control your emotions, anger is good, but it's how you channel it. If you get angry over this error because you can't game or whatever, well, you can channel your anger and you try, can try to fix the problem. So let me cut to the chase. This is the, the customer's question verbatim. We have a computer with Windows Vista Home Premium. It won't start up. It says the user profile service failed to log in. User profile cannot be loaded. That is a catastrophic error because you cannot log into the computer until you rectify that error. When you click on OK, it logs off, then the small picture with the user initials is on the screen. So what they mean by that is you're trying to log into Windows with your user login, patent, username and password. And then all of a sudden you receive that error. The user profile service failed to log on. Well then it's going to kick you out. It's going to log you off to login prompt. And on Vista, you can use, see your icons. Or if you if you have Vista configured where you don't need to enter in your password, it'll just kick you out to log off prompt. There might not be a box to type in your password. It'll, it'll just be your profile avatar. Your little avatar will show up, and you'll try to click on it, and you'll just get an endless loop. It's just going to loop. There are different ways to fix this, but I try when it comes to dealing with people over the internet or just if I'm not able to control the computer myself, then my tactics are different, but even myself, keep it simple, stupid. You don't have to overcomplicate things. It's already complicated enough. Most people aren't going to know understand what that error is. I already know because of experiences, but there's different reasons why that error can occur. I would say most times it is a corrupt user profile, but there could be false positives also. It could be malware, spyware, viruses could potentially cause that error, believe it or not. Oh, yes. Now, I, I'll give you a hint. What do you think fixed this problem? What do you think ultimately fixed this problem? I'll let you guess. It was System Restore again. So hit System Restore, it's a paradox. It can be a great tool when it works, but a lot of times it doesn't work or there are no restore points. But whenever you can use System Restore, use it. Now, in order to get to System Restore, you can't just kick it off. So this is where ignorance is bliss until you die from a state-sponsored, government, military-sponsored vaccination. Do you want to continue to remain in ignorance and then someday die from a vaccine? Or do you want to study vaccines and find out that they are dangerous and toxic with metals that you should not inject yourself with 
And I don't even want to digress about how, I don't even want to digress about vaccines and how they're a complete fraud, but I digress back to this. But you have choices. You can re remain ignorant or you can learn. Click on the link in the description box below so that you can read my blog post at my website, anacapiers.com. Full, abstract, detailed, written instructions. It, I just, full instructions. What you're going to want to try to do is first, I would say, to, to possibly quickly resolve this issue if it's a false positive or a quick fix would be to boot into Windows safe mode. There's an advanced boot options menu with Windows Vista. Before Windows tries to boot, you press and keep tapping the F8 key until an advanced boot option menu opens. You'll have different options. It depends on the computer manufacturer. Some of them throw in other options like factory recovery or restore or whatever. But generally, you're going to see safe mode, safe mode with networking, last known good configuration, and disable. Blah, there's like four or five or six, but usually there's only three that I describe to people trying to fix issues because the other two or three are too complicated and it's not even worth trying to describe those look for safe mode look for safe mode with networking look for command prompt those three try all three and then once you try well I would first try last known good configuration that will try to boot windows into the hence the term last known good configuration it's worth a shot if that doesn't work try safe mode with networking if that doesn't work try safe mode if none of those work, then boot it into the command prompt. And then what you're going to do is you're going to... Now, if you have another login, you don't have to go through all that bullshit. If you have a second login account, try to log in with that account. If you only have one login account, you're fucked. Sort of. If you have a second login account, that it, it's not the administrator account. I'm not talking about the administrator account yet. You have two separate profiles on your Windows Vista computer, or I'll leave that for last then try to log in with the second account and then what you can do if that account has administrator rights you'll have access to all your programs you'll have access to the internet and and if you do indeed have a corrupt profile you can move that data to your other second user profile or you can create another one and then move it when I'm talking about user profile data your desktop your favorites bookmarks documents music and video files any anything under your user profile you know what I'm saying you should know what that is you should know what a user profile is in Windows so what this individual had to do they were able to log in to command prompt which was good they were now let me before I get to that I think what it fixed it was SFC scan see this is where knowledge is powerful and ignorance is bliss until you die from a vaccine a world order world health organization you know United Nations one world government vaccine do you think that they care about you do you think that they care if you perish SFC scan I had them run an SFC scan so what you're gonna do is well they were able to boot into command prompt they were I'm trying to it's it's let me I'm trying to let me think now last known good configuration didn't fix it but they were able to use one of the safe mode options that's what my point is they weren't able to log in normally without getting that catastrophic error the user profile service failed to log in, user profile cannot be loaded. But they were able to log into one of the safe mode options, either safe mode with networking or safe mode. And they were in one of the, the safe mode options. I had them run SFC scan. And the command is written in the blog post. SFC space forward slash scan now. Run that at least three times. Run it three times especially if the first time you run it it stipulates that there are errors run it another two times I've noticed with pattern recognition when that when you run an SFC scan three times better results 
Now, I didn't have them run a check disk scan because chances are that's too long of a scan at this point. I would have if I, if I could not help them enable the administrator account, which is, which is what you're going to do next. So now, after running an SFC scan, it did find errors and it did fix them, so that's good. Now they logged into either command prompt. I would recommend choosing command prompt because you don't need to log into a GUI at this point, but it's up to you. If you're able to log into safe mode with networking, you can open up a command prompt. If you're able to log into safe mode, you can open up a command prompt. If you're able to log into command prompt, you can type in commands. So sometimes you, you can't log into safe mode with networking. Sometimes you cannot log into safe mode, but sure enough, command prompt works. Whatever works. Sometimes you have no choice. I then instructed them to enable the administrator account. It's in my blog post. So now sometimes the administrator account is enabled. I think by default with Vista, it may not be. I don't think, but you could try it. Now, by default, the administrator account does not have a password. So you would just type in administrator. You have to spell it properly, administrator. And then for the password, leave it blank, click, you know, click login. And you'll if, if it's not enabled, you'll get an error. It'll just say, you know, access denied or that account doesn't exist. In a command prompt, what you're going to do is you're going to enable it and you're going to type in this command. This is where ignorance is bliss until until you run into a crisis like this and you don't know command line. Why don't you know command line? Why haven't you learned command line on a Windows based computer? Why haven't you learned command line on a Mac based computer? Why haven't you learned command line on a Linux based computer? You think everything is fun and games and clowns and sugary treats that lowers your immune system and makes you sick? Suffer thy consequences. Net user administrator active colon yes type it in exactly the way i have it written in my blog post make sure there's a space between administrator and the forward slash that's a forward slash the slash down by your question mark key down in the lower row of your keyboard by the shift you should receive a response stipulating that the command was successful if you type it properly now it could be possible that your computer is corrupt and Windows is so corrupt that it, you can't even enable it, but that's pretty severe cases. This individual was able to successfully enter that command, and then I had them reboot the computer. You're going to have to exit out of command prompt, or you're going to have to restart. And then now, you, you can cut to the chase and save yourself time and just reboot Windows Vista or whichever version of Windows and let it boot normally. You don't have to hit the F8 key. You don't have to boot it into any more advanced options if you don't want to. Just cut to the chase at the login prompt. Now, I think by default, if you have your Vista profile, or if you have your Windows profile set to automatic login, now that you en enable the administrator account, it's still going to allow you to choose that, that profile. So you'll either have to type in the, the there, there will either be a, a password box or there will be two icons now, at least two. If you only had one user profile, now you're gonna have two. And there'll be two separate avatars. So click on the administrator avatar and it'll try to automatically log in. Or if you have your computer configured to where you have to enter in a password, you're gonna have to enter in a password. But like I said before, the built-in administrator account is passwordless. There is no password, it's blank. You don't have to type anything in, just leave the, the password box empty and then click login or click on the avatar and then it should it'll take a while depends on the speed of your computer the health of your computer blah 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 and it can take anywhere up to five to believe it or not five to ten minutes for you finally to log in to the administrator pro it has to build the profile you've never logged in with administrators so technically there is no profile yet you just now enabled the administrator account so it's going to take a while it has to build the profile from scratch and so that can take five to ten minutes. Just be patient. Eventually, you'll be logged into the desktop, and and then here's where I will demonstrate also. So I'll I'll talk about this now. Now this blog post was written specifically for Windows Vista Home Premium, but you can certainly use it as a basis point for other operating systems such as Windows XP 7.8.1.10. 8 
the 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 exact steps are not going to be the same but as long as you know how to get into a command prompt bam sfc scan bam net use enable administrator you know what i'm saying yes net use administrator active oh you want to learn net use net use can save your ass oh yes all right so let me demonstrate i actually have a windows Vista computer, believe it or not. I have a business version. But then I can, you know, demonstrate it. I'm not going to demonstrate all the commands. I can't reproduce it. I can't reproduce. I don't have a video capture card yet. I might get one. I might not. I'm not fucking spending $200 for a video capture card just for my YouTube videos. So it just, that's just pointless. It's not like I make fucking $10,000 a month like the YouTube shills do. I mean, all right, I'm logged in, so let me transition. Now, this is where it's productive if you have multiple versions of Windows, especially for me. Because there are, yes, there are still people that use Windows Vista. So here's Windows Vista. I'm logged in. So what you can do, once your administrator profile is created and you're patient, you just click Start. And then you go ahead and just make sure that you know your prof your menu works and you can even test the internet and blah 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 blah. So that's what I had this individual do. I had them make sure that they were able to log in with their their administrator account successfully, make sure that it looked like all their programs, all their games were loaded, and then I also had them test the internet. And after at first they said they didn't have access, but in my opinion is because the user profile, the administrator profile, was still getting built. And an average user doesn't realize that that profile has never occurred and it can take, you know, a while for Windows to build it. You know what I'm saying? Now, what fundamentally fixed the problem, now you, you had to take some steps. To me, what fundamentally fixed it was System Restore. In my opinion, it's possible that they did receive a virus or a malware or a spyware i don't know that for a fact but it's possible or their windows profile became corrupt however i don't it was not a hard i don't think it was a hardware issue because a system restore fixed the problem you know why because they reverted back their computer to before they were having this problem they reverted it back using a restore point to before they were having problems with their with that error user profile service could not log on user profile service is not working that's a catastrophic error now when it comes to corrupt profiles I'll be blunt I don't fucking waste time trying to fix corrupt profiles I nope I don't wait no nope, I learned decades ago now you know no a decade and a half ago. No. Don't waste your time trying to repair a corrupt profile. Fuck it. Just now you can try system restore. If system restore doesn't work or it doesn't fix the problem, it could be that your hard drive is failing or it could be just that there are bad sectors. What that means is if there's bad sectors on the hard drive and your profile data is on those very same sectors that are bad or having problems, well then that will cause problems and that can cause that error. But I don't fuck with profiles. I don't care if the hard drive is failing or if there are bad sectors or it's just Windows was corrupt. If a system restore doesn't fix it, I move on. I don't fuck around. I don't try to run scans and I don't download software that claims that they can repair your pro. I don't fucking waste any of that time. What I do is I would create a new profile, a fresh, brand new profile that should not be corrupt, and then you move the data over. You move the data over your documents music pictures favorites bookmarks videos documents you know then i w once you have backed up all your data from your profile you should already have your data backed up but you know you could move that data to a this the new profile delete the old profile because it's just corrupt and believe it or not with Windows, profiles can get gargantuan. They can build themselves to the to multiple gigabytes. Oh yes. All you have to do is right click on your user. Go to users, 
Now on, on XP and Vista, it's under Documents and Settings. Then go to your user profile, right click the main folder, and click on Properties. And it, it takes a while to populate. It has to sit there and scan and, and see how many files are there and how, how much data. And eventually you'll get a figure. And yes, profiles can get into the gigabytes of size. Yes, they are. Yes, they can. And because there's a lot of crap, Microsoft stores a lot of crap, a lot of cache files, a lot of, there's a, a remote, there's a roaming profile, it just goes on and on and on and on. And in, in my opinion, the larger a profile gets, the more possible that it can get corrupt. And the reason why your user profile gets larger, one, one reason is you keep installing more programs. Every time you create a program, another folder gets installed and, and some software programs they will keep your personal settings inside a user profile that's why I recommend that you not load that much software on Microsoft Windows computers but obviously I don't go around telling people what to do but I've noticed with power recognition the least amount of software that you load on Windows computers the less problems you're gonna have so now I'm going to show you how to kick off a system restore because that's what fundamentally fixed this problem so you click on start and you can either go into control panel and then look for system and then go into system protection say continue at the user account control and then you're gonna want to make sure that you're clicked on your you want to make sure that you're in the system protection tab it should take you there but there could be a bug with Windows that just make sure that if you're not there click on the system protection tab then you would click on system restore another way to find yourself there is to type in system restore and there it is right there just click on it select it and it's gonna take it that's quicker say you say continue at the user account control BAM it takes you all the way it skips and on Windows Vista it skips it takes you directly to system restore so let me cancel because I want to show you how to get there in the other window so go to control panel yeah, as you can see my Windows Vista machine is fast that's because it's running on a dual core but that computer came with a Windows Vista business secure certificate of authenticity sticker so even though it's a dual core back then they were still installing Windows Vista on dual cores and then you know why else is pretty fast It's because I don't fuck with it I don't load software that I don't need I only have loaded a few pieces of software that I need that's my file server and it runs fast and I never have problems with it I never I what reboot it once a month all right so system system protection user account control and I'm remoted in I'm remotely connected I, I don't have a video capture card so that will slow you down a little bit when, now remote desktop is pretty quick on a local area network but it's still there is some slowness because you know you're you're transferring data you know through remote so anyways so system protection then what you want to do is select system restore you don't need to create a restore point that I need to make a video about that because a lot of times what happens is that with Microsoft Windows XP Vista 7 8 8.110 you go into system restore there is no system restore and you're like well, what the fuck goddamn Aaron that son of a bitch he's a liar he's a pathological liar he said go into system restore and I'll be able to to select restore points wrong I never said that taken out of context I'm going to take you to court for misquoting me. I mean, no, I don't care about that. Click System Restore. You can create a restore point, and then you can make sure that there are restore points. So click on System Restore, and then it's going to take you to this window. Restore System Files and Settings. Click Next. It just tells you it can fix problems. Now, check this out. System Restore does not affect any of your documents, pictures, or other personal data. Now, what that means is that it does not mean your programs. If you, let's say last night you installed Grand Theft Auto 10, and then your user profile had a catastrophic failure, you could not log in. Then you went and kicked off a System Restore to before you installed Grand Theft Auto 10 and before you were having this problem. Well, Grand Theft Auto would no longer exist on your computer and you would have to reinstall it. 
However, System Restore does not touch your user profile, meaning your favorites, bookmarks, pictures, documents, videos, music, whatever is in your user profile. It to me, it would be, it might be productive for you to study and learn what a user profile is on a Windows computer. Very important. There, that's where your user data is stored and I would recommend that you well I don't recommend shit anymore I think it's productive that you keep all your important data there because believe it or not you can you can map your my documents folder to in, to a network drive and that but that's a separate video and that's more that's more complex but see that's where ignorance is bliss until you die from the vaccination ignorance is bliss on a Windows computer until you run into a catastrophic event so click next now as you can see there's multiple restore points because you know windows updates is a is a restore point now you can with vista you can also click down here and select show restore points older than five days and look at all these restore points you see how healthy my windows vista computer is you see how fast it runs you see how i don't have antivirus software loaded you see how it's not slow it's not sluggish you see how I never have problems with it it helps that my computers are behind a Linux firewall but you know besides that <laughs> no when you learn when you get off your lazy derriere and study and learn you can avoid potential problems with with Windows and even if you do suffer a catastrophic catastrophic event you can rectify it because you're not as ignorant anymore so look at all these restore points man so that's a good thing but when it comes to an a event like this what I instruct is try to remember try to remember go back in time when did you first remember that this problem occurred and you received the user login service unavailable could not log in and then it kicks you out of your login when do you remember that that first started was it last night was it a fort was it two fortnights ago was it a week was it a month when was it you want to choose a date before you were having this problem so that is also beneficial for you to as soon as you jesus fucking christ with these goddamn fucking americans and their goddamn fucking noise pollution that's why to me it could be beneficial for you to try to fix a problem as soon as it occurs the longer you wait in my opinion the greater chance that you may not be able to fix it whereas if it's fresh in your mind bam oh it was last night well I was just gaming last night or well I've been busy this week but the last time I booted into Windows Vista I was just fine I was able to play games and no problems and then it, you know then what you do is you pick a restore point okay we're gonna restore windows back to April 8th exactly at 12 a.m. and then you're gonna click next so you want to pick a restore point back to before you were having this catastrophic crisis which is redundant I'm not gonna click finish because that will start it now in order to complete and and begin the process you're gonna click finish and then windows has to restart so and then also I always warn people close all your programs do it now you shouldn't have anything open to begin with when you kick off a system restore man close this crap close it close whatever you can bam I can close that can I close this yes bam everything's closed nothing else is open click finish and then that's gonna trigger Windows Vista to restart and then that's when Windows gets rolled back Windows cannot roll back itself while the file system is mounted. The file system must be dismounted and then remounted and then Windows restores the files back to when you pick, back to the restore point, back in time to when you told System Restore to restore it to. You're the boss. You're in control now. You set your destiny. Do you remain ignorant and then continue with this catastrophic had a struck event or do you seek help and then or do you study and learn on your own you know you have many choices I'm not gonna click finish but then Windows Vista will reboot and then eventually you should receive a success 
it, it'll just boot into Windows or it'll boot back up into to the login prompt if you have your Windows computer configured to where you have to type in a password if you have automatic login it should then automatically log in back into their to your profile and that's what happened with this individual the system restore was successful and then it booted Windows like normal and then I'm pretty I think they had their profile configured for auto login and so then it automatically logged in to their desktop and th and then that nasty error disappeared and all of their programs were available their games and the internet and it was back to quote unquote normal back to the way it was so that's how you can potentially fix these nasty 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 user profile the user profile surface failed to log in user profile cannot be loaded do not proceed do not pass go and receive your 200 fake federal reserve notes aaron you've been a bad boy aaron last night criticizing the system how dare you aaron natural karma aaron i'm gonna use one of your slogans natural karma bitch boy <laughs> good luck good luck trying to fix this if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> you know what I'm saying now here's my disclaimer I use the word potential there are chances that you won't be able to fix your issue there could be many reasons why it's a hardware failure there's bad sectors on your hard drive and when you went to kick off system restore it's not gonna be able to fix the bad sectors you're gonna have to run a check disk or you're gonna have to use some other utility that will scan for bad sectors and try to repair them what it does what what check disk does check disk depends on what variables slash i will you know slash f slash r it's going to check for corrupt files and it's going to check for bad sectors and if it notices any bad sectors it marks them in the operating system as bad and then it moves your data to a good sector it tries to remove as much data from the bad sector to a good sector but there if system restore doesn't fix your problem ch chances are in my opinion a great chance that yes indeed you have problems with your hard drive or or windows is so corrupt windows now is so corrupt that just fuck it again it depends on if you want to if you want to bang your fucking head on a lead pipe and just bash your brains in you know trying you know doing all these tricks downloading the software that promises to fix a corrupt profile or just fucking wipe and reload man fuck it back up your data and wipe that bitch they used a dell so you would hit f12 and there's a possibility that you could perform a factor recovery but i'm going into overtime giving you bonus tips that i don't think you necessarily deserve because i had a customer that wasted my time i he had a catastrophic catastrophic event with windows 8.1 and I don't want to talk about all the details because it was a nightmare. Well, a check disk ran and it fucked up his computer. His computer was so fucked up. There were over 200 malware items and that was only off of one program. When I ran CCleaner, there was like fucking 5 gigs of cash and there was like fucking thousands of entries in the registry that were not necessary. That computer was fucked up. You could not run an SFC scan in normal windows you could not run check disk you could not run DISM he was he had windows 8.1 well the, you know what the bastard did he even called me I gave him my number I spent like two or three nights trying to help him I finally said you know what people Americans don't like the truth they're cowards they don't like the truth they don't like the fact that their government military is a criminal crime syndicate and is, you know, attacking innocent women and children and men in Iraq and Afghanistan and Palestine and blah, 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 and Syria and blah, 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 based off of lies. Americans don't like the truth. You know what I'm saying? He, I... You know, I walked him through. I troubleshooting him. I, I gave him all this advice. I mean, I gave him like thousands of dollars worth of advice. I showed him how to run SFC scan, check disk scan, DISM scan, system restore. I educated him. I told him this, this, and that. 
I mean, I gave them, in my opinion, thousands of dollars of technology information, all you know, within a couple, you know, two or three sessions on the phone. And then you know what the bastard did? He submitted a refund. He's a coward. He's a bitch boy. He's one of these Americans that are cheapskates. He's a cheapskate. He didn't want to pay. He didn't want to admit that he allowed his Windows 8.1 computer to, to become to the point where it was catastrophic. He was lazy about it. He didn't want to educate himself. And then when I came along and told him the truth that, look, I told him just reinstall Windows. I even, I even showed him how to use Dell DataSafe. Now, I don't know. This is an older computer. I don't know if this Windows Vista Home computer has Dell DataSafe Restore. They renamed it. But Dell, look for Dell Data Save Restore and Backup. Backup and Restore. You can even backup your data with that. But this guy was a clown. He was so... I'm sorry, but I don't feel sorry. When, when you tell a person how to run an SFC scan 10 times and they still don't remember it and they still have to ask you, I don't feel sorry for people at that point because in my opinion at that point, they're, even, they're either trying to pull a fast one on me or they're just they're they're dead they're they're dead to the point where their brains aren't clicking normally in my opinion i mean when you tell somebody to kick off an sfc scan 10 times you email it to them or you send it to through chat or you you remote desktop in and you show them how to type the command and you even tell them over the phone SFC space forward slash scan now if you cannot remember SFC's forward slash excuse me space forward slash scan now after 10 times or 20 times what are you doing using a computer adios